Do you want to know how to shoot street lamps the right way so that you get perfectly exposed results every time? Let's get into it. Most of us have a best friend. However, they generally are not with us when we're out shooting night photography. This is actually a good thing because one, they will probably distract you and two, your current best friend is about to be replaced by a new best friend, the street light. The street light and the window light is the fundamental element that will help you create beautiful night photography. I've said this before, but without the street light, there is no night street photography or urban night photography as the streets will be pitch black and there will be no light for the camera to make a decent exposure. So the humble street light does a few things. It reflects light onto the surrounding area. This can create interesting highlights on a wall, a door, the pavement, the road, a person, etc. Plus, you can use a Pro Mist filter on your lens and this will create an atmospheric halation around the glow of the street lamp. You can photograph a person entering a pool of light surrounded by deep shadows. And you can also focus on the detail and the texture that the street lamp's illumination reflects on a wall or on a building or anything else. You can even use the street lamp itself as the main element of the composition. Just a heads up, if you stick around by the end of this video, you'll be able to use the information in this tutorial alongside a free cheat sheet that I will give you the link for, which you can use on your phone to take with you on the streets. That way you can get perfect shots every time. Now there are different methods for shooting street lights. For night street photography, where you are constantly on the move, you can either dial back on the exposure compensation so that the street light is exposed correctly, or you can try how I shoot on the streets. I always keep a Pro Mist filter on my lens, which works to soften the highlights. And I also use multi-metering mode, which takes a reading from across the frame. If you specifically want to know how to shoot night street photography with street lights and people, the link is above. However, if you want to slow down and shoot beautiful urban night landscapes with your camera locked off on a tripod, which will allow you to get the most detail from your photos, then this next method will get you perfect shots every time. The most important takeaway when photographing street lamps and their reflected light is not to overexpose the image. Once the image is overexposed, you are left with a clip highlight in post-processing that cannot be recovered and therefore the detail will be gone forever. This is why I have learned to bracket my shots when shooting urban night street photography. Using manual mode, I have my bracket set to three stops underexposed, a correctly exposed shot and three stops overexposed. This way I have covered myself if there are any underexposed shadowy areas in my correctly exposed shot and any blown out window or street lights also in the correctly exposed shot. And later in Photoshop, I will be able to blend in an underexposed shot where the street lamp is exposed correctly with the correctly exposed shot of the scene where the street light has probably been blown out. I layer the two shots together using the underexposed street lamp as my top layer and gently brush in the correctly exposed details from the underlying correctly exposed shot. I wouldn't recommend capturing people with your bracketed exposures, simply for the fact that you're shooting with slow shutter speeds 
and therefore your subjects are more than likely to be blurred. The minimum I would personally photograph a moving subject is 1 80th of a second, but you may have different results depending upon your camera's IBIS and how steady you can hold your camera. Shadows, textures, details, and contrast. These are the photographic elements that you can use in your night street photography, and they will make your images stand out. Take a look at these examples that I've recently photographed. We can accentuate the details in this composition because of the street lamp reflecting on the wall and on the cobbled stone ground. Notice the beautiful highlights on the wall and the detail on the withered foliage. For this image, after I took the initial brackets and got home and uploaded the photos on my computer, to my surprise, three stops of exposure was not enough for this shot. I think it was because I was so close to the light. So what I did was, I came back to the scene and retook the triple bracket and afterwards I increased the shutter speed until the light source was completely exposed correctly and took some extra shots with much darker exposures. I've said it in my other video on urban landscape photography, which I'll link above. Sometimes you'll have to take extra shots for insurance, otherwise you'll get home and realize that the shots didn't work out, just like I did. Thankfully, I don't live too far away. So let's take the shots, including the extra underexposed shots that I took, and I'll reveal my settings as we go along. Right, let's take these bracketed shots. Just a heads up if you're interested, we're using single shot autofocus with the wide area mode. As you can see, because we're on a tripod, we can afford to shoot at the base ISO of 100. And as you know, I like to shoot wide open, so here we are at f2.8. So rather than just looking at the camera screen taking shots, which looks a bit boring, here are the actual shots that were taken. The underexposed shot is at one tenth of a second. The correctly exposed shot was at 0.8 seconds and the overexposed shot was at six seconds. From the various underexposed shots that I took, the one that I used for the light bulb exposure was at one fiftieth of a second. And this was all shot with the Sony a7R 3 with the Tamron 28 to 75 millimeter lens at 37 millimeters. Always use a tripod for these kind of shots because your long exposure bracketed shots will be blurred if you don't. This is just to show you how I increased the shutter speed in order to take the underexposed shots. Anyway, if you want to see how I edited this photo, that's coming up after a couple of quick extra examples. This is St. Mary's Church. I wanted to give this composition a slight leading line using the cobbles and the pavement in the road, just so I can show you that when you go out and practice this technique, you don't have to just take a photo of only street lamps. You can photograph a whole street if you want to. The purpose of this tutorial is just to show you how to expose street lamps correctly. Still at f2.8 and ISO 100, the details of this shot are as follows. The underexposed bracket was 1 13th of a second. The correctly exposed shot was 0.6 seconds and the overexposed shot was 5 seconds and the focal length was 68 millimeters. And this is the blended shot that I merged in Lightroom I only used the underexposed shot and the correctly exposed shot to blend them. And I also did some light editing with a preset. Right, on to the final shot. The main focus of this shoot is the street lamp, which in the center of the shot creates symmetry. It's also lighting up the detail on the wall and the pavement for this shot, I used exactly the same settings as before. However, I didn't have to take any extra shots for this triple bracket. One shot underexposed at one eighth of a second, a correctly exposed shot at one second, and an overexposed shot at eight seconds. The focal length was 53 millimeters. 
and here is the final blended image which I simply merged using the underexposed shot and the correctly exposed shot in Lightroom and then I added a preset. Don't forget I used a Pro Mist filter on each of these shots hence the halation around the light sources. One of my favourite things about this photo is the neon sign in the record shop window. So I'm working with one of the very underexposed shots that I took for the street lamp filament bulb and also the main shot that was exposed correctly. I've made some minor tweaks to both raw files, adjusting exposure, reducing highlights and increasing shadows. Let's open them up in Photoshop. I find it easier to use the underexposed shot as the top layer and blend in the correctly exposed shot. Let's reduce the opacity slightly so that we get a little haze from the correctly exposed shot. Now I'm going to blend in all of the highlights from the underlying layer. Let's speed this up for brevity's sake. So what I'm doing very quickly is blending in the highlights from the underlying layer and being careful to balance the shadows and the highlights from both layers using the opacity control. Finally, I just want to delete that dustbin on the left and a few patches on the wall that stick out like a sore thumb. Let's save this and go back into Lightroom. Right, let's use my preset Dark and Atmospheric Night. That actually looks nice. I just want to get rid of that haze that's spilling out of the image with a graduated filter. I also want to darken down the cobblestones in the foreground a little with another filter. Let's open up the shadows slightly and reduce the blacks a little. It's looking all right, if you don't mind me saying so. I'm gonna increase the dehaze slider as the halation is a bit too much for me. For this photo, let's increase the clarity to bring out those details. And finally, let's add a bit of a vignette. There, this image is done, subtle and atmospheric at the same time. In my early days, I would have gone crazy with the clarity, but not anymore. My motto is subtlety is best. And also, we're gonna need a bigger boat, but that's another story. So all you've got to do now is download that cheat sheet and head out and take some shots. Now is a good time to look at this video here to learn how I overcame my fear of shooting in bad light. Until we meet again, go forth and create. Thank you.